John chapter 1. We're going to go verses 6 through 9. Amen. Amen. If you can, stand up for the reading of the word. If not, you're okay. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Amen. <laughs> Felt like I just needed to keep going. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we want to thank you for your holy and inner word, Lord. We pray that you be with us as we walk through this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Again? Bobby. One job, Bobby. One job. One job, Bobby. We're not gonna look. I ain't gonna look. Not before I preach. Okay. You might turn into a fiery dark sun. Thank you, Bobby. What is it that people really need? Oh, Jesus. Well, hey, you got it. All right, let's pray it out. <laughs> so as you walk through life, there will be dozens, maybe hundreds of different answers that you're going to hear um, about what people really need in this life. And really, it depends on your background. It depends on your struggles. It depends on where you are in your life. And that will really affect the answer that you have to that question of, of what people really need. For example, if you grew up poor and, and that, that maybe there was times that you didn't really have enough to eat, your view on what people really need is probably going to lean towards food, to end hunger, to, to feed people. That'll be something that's really bigger in your heart. If you grew up in the hood, sometimes maybe both apply. And you knew a whole bunch of people, including yourself, that dropped out of school maybe 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Maybe they made it to ninth grade. You drop out. Then your, your bent might be towards education. You know, we, this is how we're going to fix the problem of poverty. We're going to educate people to get them out of the hood. And to get out of that vicious circle that, that is that place. Now, in the recovery industry, it is an industry. Um, because although we are free, not a lot of places are free. Um, a lot of times, a lot of places cost a very, very ton of money. Very, very... Yes, a very, very, a, a ton of, yeah. Yeah, I've been here for like eight years, man. It's, it's too late. <laughs> There's a lot of money to be made off of people who are lost or broken. And, and so if your bent is towards the addiction industry, the recovery industry and all that stuff, you're going you're gonna to say, well, people just need opportunities. Just give them some Suboxone, you get them a job and they'll be fine. Now these are, these these are important things: hunger, addiction. You know, get people out of that vicious cycle that they've been in. Those are very very important things. But that's not what the Bible says that people need. That's not what the Bible says is the most important thing. It says that there's a greater need than all those things. There's a greater need that people have than the physical needs that we deal with each and every day. Now those are are important. And God gives people hearts to to and and gear toward those. Because not everybody can be geared towards feeding the homeless. Not everybody can do that because otherwise, well, eventually there'd be no more people to feed and people would be bored, right? What do I do now? You know, not everybody can be bent on addiction, um, trying to, to help people struggling with addiction and, and to recovery. Not everybody can do that. But there's one thing that we can all be bent towards. The Bible says that we are all sinners. That we are sinners. That we were born that way. 
and we were born sinners, and that we needed to be born again. That basically we need to die and to be reborn. Yes, we were born sinners. And we were separated from the Holy God. So the Bible says that sin separates us from a holy God. And in that separation, we are damned to an eternity in hell. How's that for sugarcoating? Okay. I was trying. I was trying to make it real palatable. Without Jesus, you are damned to hell. Sugar? The sugar is that too sugary? Let me try to sugar it up. There's no way. There's no way. We are sinners. The Bible is very clear we are sinners. One of the things that... that Set, I like about set free is that I do not need to convince you guys that you're sinners. Most of us really know this, but some of us don't really know it. We're like, oh yeah, society. In, in society's eyes, yeah, we're, we're we're bad people. But but we don't realize that because we want to think, oh, deep down in my heart, I'm still a good man. Man, I used to sell heavy dope for lightweight money. Um. I used to weigh the bags heavier than they're supposed to be. I'm a good person. I would give people 75 cents on the dollar for food stamps, not just 50. We were laughing, but that's how we think. We think that even though this world has cast us out, we're still really good in our hearts. And that is a lie. We are not good people. There was one good person that bad thing... What was that R.C. School said? Why do, you know, somebody asked him, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, it's only happened once, because there's only one good person, and he chose it. Amen. Jesus Christ was the only good person to walk the face of this earth, and he chose to die. We stand condemned as sinners. But the Bible says that if we believe in Jesus Christ, we are not condemned. This John 3, 16. I, I know we all... For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. But what about the next verse? And the next verse? Here, let, let's see what that says. Because those following verses give a big, bigger context. And it says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. And everybody's like, Yeah, that's right. But in order that the world might be saved through Him. Yes. And, and that's encouraging, right? And then look at 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. All right. But whoever does not believe is already condemned. Man. Wait, what? <laughs> because, why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness. Rather than light because their works were evil. Oh, wait. It got quiet. <laughs> We don't always look at the neighbor in verse, man. We just want that encouragement. Even like after Romans 1, 16 and 17, you know, the memory verse is like, yeah, my faith, more faith. And then, and then right after that it says, for in this the world is condemned. There's a, a hope. But he says that there's a reason for that hope. It's because we are condemned. We are born into condemnation. And until we have faith in Christ, there is no hope. We are condemned. Well, Pastor, that's closed-minded. Man, take that up with the Lord. Don't take it up with me. I'm sharing what the Word says. Don't take that up with me. Take that up with the Lord. If you don't like the way He did it, talk to Him. God's answer to our sin problem, what people really need the most, is atonement through Jesus Christ. That is God's answer. Belief in the second part of of the God. Yeah. We talked about his eternality in one one. The conduit of, of creation and the conduit of God's will, the executor of God's will. We talked about all that stuff. And then last week we talked about that life is in him. Now we're gonna go a little bit further. Let's go to six and seven. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness. To bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. Witness. This, this is 
the root word for witness and testimony and all that stuff is like is martyr or something. It's, it, it's martyro, whatever. It's, a, it's all a derivative of basically someone that stands to testify. John came to testify. John came as a witness. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says in order to establish the truth, there needs to be two witnesses, right? Um, eyewitnesses are good. Um, there's, there's other witnesses that, that can testify. You know, um, if your blood's on the, at the crime scene, you know, your hand's bloody, you, you have possession of the bloody knife, and uh, somebody's dead, and all that stuff is right there, uh, that's, that's an eyewitness to something. It's a forensic eyewitness, but it's still there. In order to prove a fact, witnesses are necessary, right? Because otherwise, it's he said, she said, hearsay this, hearsay that. So, John came as a witness to the light. He was sent by God as a witness to the light. There's all kinds of witnesses that we have. We have the witness of the Father. In Matthew 3, 17, at, at Jesus' baptism, it says, A voice came from heaven saying, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. That was evidence that the Father had sent him. And I don't know who all heard the voice. I know John the Baptist heard the voice. It says, this is my son in whom I will please. On the Mount of Transfiguration, he asked to that. He said, listen to them. Listen to him. This is my son in whom I will please. You listen to him. I mean, Peter, James, and John, I mean, they come down from, you know, they're at the mountain. They're saying, hey, let, let's set up three tips. One for Elijah, one for Moses. Let's stay here. That's not what they're supposed to say. Listen to him. The Father is a witness to Jesus Christ. In John 8, 14, it says that he bears witness to himself. And that, that, that doesn't always work, right? Well, I, I told you, man, I didn't do it. I told you, I, I told you I'm innocent. Yeah, but the 15 other witnesses said you were there. With me. You don't really accept with uh, certain kind of testimony about your own actions in certain cases. But in John 8, 14, it says he bears witness of himself. It says, even if I bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. He, he testifies to himself as a witness to who he is. His works bear witness about who he is. In John 10, 25, it says, I told you, you do not, you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. And there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of evidence, a lot, of, a lot of witnesses. A lot of people saw this. The Father, the Son, the Son's works. Oh, wait, the Scriptures. The scriptures bear witness too. John 5, 39 says, You search the Scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. This is one of my favorite verses, man. It says, And it is they... The bear witness about me. And he's talking about the Old Testament, the law and the prophets. That is what he's talking about. You search those looking for eternal life, but they bear witness about Jesus Christ. The whole Bible is about Jesus. You got, oh, wait a minute, we got David and we got Goliath. And we, what about that? Well, those are pictures of Christ. Those are typologies of Christ. That, that's a fancy word. We're not going to get into that today. Amen. Should have been here for about, what, a year ago for Hebrews. Hebrews, we did that. Talk about typologies. And as we walk through the book of John, there's going to be seven miracles that John writes down so that we would have eternal life. So we can know that Jesus is the Christ and that in Him we have life. Remember, the whole thing of, of John is wrapped up in verse 20, 31. It says that I've written these things so that you might believe that Jesus is the only Son of God and that in that, in Him, you have life. That's the whole point. That is the whole point, is that you would believe in Jesus. When you come in, day one, phase one, what's the first thing you do? John 1, 1 through 18. Well, maybe not the first day, but, you know, it's the first day you might not. What? 
I know one of the most challenging passages, and that's day one, phase one. You're like, uh, what does this mean? Yeah, I know. We've cut it down because it used to be the whole chapter every day, the first day. And this is not exhaustive evidence by any means. But there's plenty there to know that Jesus is the Messiah. It says that there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist. And uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into John the Baptist. This is not about John the Baptist. We're not talking about John the Baptist. We're talking about who he came to witness about. It's, so John's whole call from God, remember, sent from God, sent by God, was to bear witness about Jesus Christ. That was his whole message. His whole message was not about him and what he did, but about who he was bearing witness about. And that bearing witness was Jesus Christ. I, want, I do want to touch something up. Sent by God. Sent by God. If you look at all the letters of Paul, what's it say? Paul, an apostle sent by God. Ordained by God. Uh, John, part of God. Well, actually, John doesn't really get into that. Um, John doesn't talk much about himself. But Paul needed to have that authority behind him, saying that he was sent by God. And that, that's an important thing, is that, that John the Baptist was sent by God. We, when we are operating in the gifts that God has given us, we are sent by God to carry forth a message. It's not just a message that I'm called to carry forth. It's a message that each one of us are called to carry forth. As people say, you know, in, in 1 Peter 3, it, it says, always be ready to prepare, to give an account for the hope that you have. So, so when you run into somebody at the store and you're like, they're like, Dude, you got fat. What happened? I'm like, Jesus? I was like, I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. I quit buying meth. I started buying food and came to Christ. <laughs> sorry, John. I didn't mean to punch you out. He was sent with one person that was to testify about the light. Last week, we, what did we establish? We established that Jesus is the light, and that light is the life of men. John was prophesied about. Did you know that? In, Ma in Malachi 4, 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. I will send you Elijah the prophet what do we always think? Whenever we hear something, we always... We're pretty literal people, aren't we? I should not come back. He came in the spirit of Elijah. Well, how do you know that? Well, okay, Matthew 11, 4, 14, it says, Jesus' words. If you have a red-letter Bible, it says, this, this stuff's in red. I don't have a red-letter Bible, but I'm going to assume that it is Jesus because it says, and Jesus replied. <laughs> <laughs> it says, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. John came in the spirit of Elijah. It wasn't a reincarnation. It wasn't any of this. John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. What was that spirit of Elijah that was coming? Isaiah 40, 30, 40 verse 3 says, A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That was John the Baptist's message. Make way for the Lord. Prepare. The kingdom of God is at hand. Make way. Prepare your hearts. The king is here. The light is here. The thing you've been waiting for 4,000 years, it's here. It's coming. And, and they said, are you, the, are you the one? No, no, no. The one that's coming after me, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. I mean, get that, that, that was John's message. Get that straight. He was not even worthy to untie the sandals of the one coming after him. Jesus Christ. But, but you look later on in John the Baptist's life, and he's still, when he's sitting in prison for preaching and for calling out uh, King Herod and, you know, got his head served on a platter, but before, obviously, before that happened, he sent a message to Jesus 
through his, his disciples and like, dude, are you really the one or, 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 or what? You know, in the midst of his panic, in the midst of his struggle, he was like, now am I doing this for nothing? You know, are you really the one? And Jesus is like, dude, why are you tripping? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not good with memorization. I'm pretty good with, uh, I, I, I'm good with the, um, the, the message of it. <laughs> Basically, that dude quit tripping. <laughs> that, that's what's going to be on everybody's notes. The pastor said, Jesus said, dude quit tripping. <laughs> John came to testify about who Christ is. The light of Christ. Why? Why did he do that? He, it, it says right here in verse 7, it says that all might believe through him that all might believe. Because remember, John already knew that you believe and you have life. That, 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 was, that was already there. He already knew that stuff. He'd been sent by God to testify to the coming of Jesus Christ. He'd been sent by God for all this stuff. And a lot of people are like, man, why can't I get sent by God like that? Well, you are. You are sent by God just like John the Baptist. I ain't eating no locust and wild honey, bro. You do what you're told. <laughs> no. um, he did not come talking about who he is. He came talking about who Christ is. Verse 8 says, He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. We as believers are also called to be witnesses of the light witnesses to the light all believers if you have faith in Christ if God has saved you if God has redeemed you you are called by God to witness to the light you are called by God to witness to the light it's going to look different because what a lot of you heard is I ain't the God to stand on the street corner and just tell people about Jesus, man, I don't know. I just ain't the God. Uh, God. Me, me neither. Me neither. I'm way too introverted for that. Hey, you know Jesus? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Thought I'd ask. I witness by preaching and teaching. That, this is where my witness is. This is where God has called me. I'm sent by God to witness and, and preach Christ to you. I know that. Hopefully you guys, if you don't know it yet, you will learn it. Or you'll leave. And it's just what it is. Some people go on, go to the street. Some people go and do basically like cold calls with, uh, for telemarketers. Hey, do you want to know about this, Lord? But there's still only one message. There's only one valid message that we need to be do. We need to be sharing. And that's believe Jesus. The second part of that, that message, after you preach believe Jesus after you share believe Jesus the next thing you do is you tell them hey believe Jesus and then after that you tell them believe Jesus that's that's it that's what our witness should be pointing people to Christ that's where it's at that's what it's all about our, our witness needs to focus on Jesus and who he is there's three elements I'm gonna we're, we're gonna kind of cover of this witness. One is the content. What is the content of our witness? If what the whole world needs, like we started at the beginning, the whole world needs to believe in Jesus, then He should be the content of our witness. Our whole witness should be believe Christ, believe in Jesus. He is our hope. Okay, well, well, what shall we share? You know, how do I share that? Do I just go up and tell random people believe Jesus? No, there's some things that, that, that we need to share. And, and you know what? I'm going to go to the second paragraph in the Apostles' Creed to kind of give us a, a breakdown because this is a, a good statement on who Jesus is. And it's a good place to start. So I'm, I'm going to read this. So, so the second paragraph starts with, I believe in Jesus Christ. He is God's only Son. Our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. There's there's a lot right there that 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 you're saying with one sentence. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Now this part is this word gets a little hairy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna qualify this because our language is way different than it was when this was written. Okay, the next one says he descended to hell. Now, it, when this was written, okay, hell was their word for the place of the dead. It, 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 when we think of hell, we think of burning, eternal damnation. That's not what they're talking about. He's talking about the place of the dead. Language difference can really screw people up. That's why I don't read a King James. And I'm not trying to attack the King James, but I this is 2021, 20, not 1611. And, and, and so I... You know, language changes. So when I read the King James, man, I struggle with some of the things because words don't mean the same thing that they did. If you read the King James, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not bashing you. I'm not bashing it. I'm just saying I don't live in that world. I live in a, a newer world. <laughs> so he was crucified. He died and was buried. He descended to hell. He covered that. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. That is a foundation that you can use to witness. There's so much, you don't even realize that there's, that is chock full of theology. Like, I don't do theology. Well, if you believe any of that, yes you do. If you don't believe any of that, yes you do. <laughs> But my point is, is John did not come to talk about himself. You should not go to talk about yourself. Right. What did John, in, in verse 29 in John 1, it says, when, when he saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. That's, that's the last point that you need to talk about when you're witnessing. It doesn't have to be five points on your hand. And not, I mean, not bashing the evangelism explosion, not doing any of that. But what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be all that. All you got to do is share Jesus. When I first started preaching, I, man, I go into panic attacks before preaching and all that stuff. One of, the, one of the things that's really good about the way that we do band practice is right before, so it keeps my mind off of panicky before I get up here to proclaim the gospel. And the, the thing about it is, when I first started preaching, man, I would get scared. And, and I go to, go to my mentor, Mark Aitman, and I'd be like, dude, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is it. Maybe you just got to brag about Jesus, bro. Like, well, you make it sound so simple. <laughs> but that's it. Brag on Jesus. One of the things is the man of our witness, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to throw stones. I've done this myself, and I tend to do it sometimes, but we're well-intentioned. When, when, when giving a testimony, when sharing what God has done, but it ends up being mostly about ourselves with a little Christian spin to it. And, and man, I've done it before. I, in California, we used to call them boastimonies because we, we talked about how big and bad we were and all this stuff and how we had all kinds of money and all this stuff and all the dope and all the this. Blah, 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 blah. They said, oh yeah, but Jesus changed my life. What? And, and, and most people have done it. I've done it. It, it, it. It's part of the deal. But that should not be the focus on that. Now, now I'm not saying don't touch your past. But say, hey, man, this is what I used to be real quick. But say, man, the blood of Christ has saved me. And this is who he is. Because that's what John came. You know, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When someone asks you for the hope that you have, hey, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That is my hope. And that should be your hope. As soon as we make it about ourselves, our witness loses power. James Montgomery Boyce says this. says, whenever a Christian layman, minister, writer, teacher, or whoever it might be gets to thinking that there is something important about him, he or she will cease to be, cease to be affected as Christ's witnesses. As soon as you start to think that you are somebody in the Lord, your witness is gone. Your witness is gone. I'm glad Kenny's here because this next this next part 
I was thinking about you when I was serving prep. It says, you cannot let people glorify you for what God does. It's a trap. It can lead to pride. Some people don't like it when you say, it's not about me, it's about what Christ is doing. It's not about me, it's what Christ is doing. And here's the test in Proverbs, I think it's 27. It says, a man is tested by the praise he receives. A man is tested by the praise he receives. When I was young in the Lord, I was like, man, this is stupid. What the heck does that mean? Until we came to plant a church and everywhere we went, everybody was like, oh, look at these men of God. Oh, look at them. Look at them. And, and, and you're, you're like, oh, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I did leave everything. It's pretty cool. Huh? I did that. But you get mixed up. A man is tested by the praise he receives. If you can't take it and point it to Christ, it's going to mess you all up. It really will. It will really screw with your, your head and your pride will start to elevate. You're like, yeah, I'm sober. I went through set free. That's right. I got that done. And, 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 and everybody at your, at your house when you go home, you're like, yeah, 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 man, you did that. Now, quick to Jesus stuff. Man, you, you, got, you went to that rehab. That's, that's cool. And, and, and over time, man, it'll start wearing you out. When what you need to do is point your whole existence to Christ. Always, always, always push it to Jesus. Just like John the Baptist point, his whole purpose was to testify about the light so that all might believe. That is our purpose, is to testify about the light so that all will believe to share Christ. Now, you can't make anybody believe anything. You share Christ for people to come to faith in Him. Your witness should never promote a pastor, should never promote a church, should never promote a program. Your witness should promote Christ. And I get it. I get it. I get it. Set free was a tool that God used to change my life too. He's a tool that God used in my heart. But you know what? God did not need set free to do it. He just used set free to do it. Your life being changed is not a, is not set free's fault. Your life being changed is Christ. It's Christ. Now, did, did, does God use set free? Absolutely. But you know what? God uses Cedar Bay Baptist. God uses Amelia Baptist. God uses even churches that aren't Baptist. Um, <laughs> God uses his people to proclaim his message. It's not about set free. It's about what the Lord is doing. It's Yeah, yeah. The program helps. All this stuff. These are all tools in God's box, but it's not about that. Does that mean that you don't say, hey, maybe you should go to Set Free, it'll, it'll, it'll help? No, I'm not saying that at all. But you say, hey, maybe you should go to Set Free because you'll find Jesus there. Just switch it up a little bit. Because that's what this is all about. Verse 9 says, uh, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. The true light. Remember, John was writing this because there was a lot of heresies coming up. There was a lot of things coming on. You know, Gnosticism, uh, people were denying that Jesus was actually in the flesh. People were denying that he came from God. They were denying all these things. So he wouldn't say that the true light, if there weren't false lights. There's a lot of false lights out there. There's a lot of things that, that can give us a false hope. There's a lot of things that won't actually save us. The world offers us very pragmatic solutions to a lot of different things. To a lot of, but, but when it comes down to it, they, they will offer pills for spiritual problems. When we're dark in depression, we're, se we're feeling separated from God. Oh, don't worry about that. We've got a prescription for you. Don't, don't worry about that. I'm not trying to knock... All not all of it. Some people actually need the stuff. It, it's cool. I'm going, oh, 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 Pastor, you, you messed. You get it. I hope you get it. There's real issues there. 
but they're pragmatic things. They're like, okay, let's you, you're struggling with uh, opiate addiction here. Let's give you some suboxone, and and and, and basically don't take those street drugs. We got better stuff, and and, and and come to our clinic. It's like get rid of your dealer. Come come to government. The world's solution for addiction is another addiction. We're sitting around in a circle talking about stupid things you did while you were high. That's, I mean. But the true light for the addict or anybody else from what this isn't what the world has to offer. The true light for your life whether addicted or not addicted, whether you're fighting this, whether you're battling marriage issues, whatever it is, is to die to your old self and to be renewed in Christ. I struggled with addiction for 20 years, but you know what? I'm not a drug addict. Well, how, how can you say that? Well, 2 Corinthians 5.17 is why I can say that. It says, if any man be in Christ, I'm in Christ. I know I'm in Christ. The Bible says I'm in Christ. Because I have faith in Him. He has called me. He's drawn me. He has planted me where I'm at. I have faith in Him. Uh, because He's given me the faith to, to even believe in Him. It, it's all about Him. So if any man is in Christ, I'm in Christ. I don't know about you. He is a new creation. I'm a new creation. It says, the old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. My addiction has passed away. Who I used to be has passed away. Behold, all things become new. My life is hidden in Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ. If you have faith in Christ. That's why we need to witness to the light. The light that is in Christ. Because that's the hope that we have for this life. Is Christ. Be careful of false lights out there. And there's even some things that will give you some practical things in this world. But they're not really a light. They can even gloss over some stuff so that you are numb to the fact that you need the Lord. You can go to a church and, 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 and do all your, your fancy religious things and think that you're okay with God but not ever actually being in Christ. Be careful of that. If, the, if you go to a church and the pastor does not share Christ but shares his agenda, run. Don't walk. Run. 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 If your pastor is preaching about how your life is going to all be better right now, man, it does not always turn better. But is he preaching the hope in Christ. He's preaching the gospel. The, the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. If he is, then stay. You can stay here too. What you need in this life is to believe Jesus. You say, well, how can this Jesus' religion fixed my life. Well, because light shines in the darkness, and the darkness flees. Your sin has led you into this darkness. And what you need is that is redemption from that darkness and freedom in Christ. Freedom to follow the Lord. Freedom to love the people that He has placed in your life. Oh, Pastor, you don't know who's in my life. Yeah, I do. I live with them too. I do. God has called us to love the people that He lays in front of us. Well, what if I don't like the people that lay before us? Well, keep seeking Jesus, you'll learn. What we need is Christ in our life. What we need is hope. And that hope is only in the light of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that, that we can be faithful witnesses to you, Lord. Witnesses of the light. Lord, we pray that, that you give us the strength to share who you are. Lord, you are king and you are God, Lord, and we need you each and every day. There's not a day that goes by that we don't need you. Lord, help us to rest in the fact that you've paid the penalty for our sin. Lord, help us to rest in the fact that, that you have done everything necessary and all we have to do is believe. Well, that belief is even a gift of you, though. So, Lord, we thank you. But we can walk through this life knowing you are God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, all right. No, 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 don't rush off yet. Don't rush off yet. we got two things going on still. If you're getting baptized, go get ready.
Come on, y'all are getting ready. We uh, are going to Ashton. Oh! Don't give him the mic. <laughs> Amen. Ashton uh, is graduating today, obviously. Yeah. Okay. He's going to stick around for a little bit. He goes to work on Tuesday, I think. Right? Amen. So uh, I'm going to let you all congratulate him. Um, but we're going to pray for him. And then, uh, then we're going to do some baptism as soon as they come out from wherever they went to go get changed. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to lift up Ashton to you. Lord, we pray that um, as he takes this next step in his life, Lord, that you uh, bless him, Lord, that you help him to be a light um, to who you are, Lord, uh, to reflect the light that you shine, Lord. Uh, bless him along the way, Lord. We love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I can hear you.